Let's start off by defining a new function, f, and it's the natural log of x. Everything that we're interested in is the natural logs or natural exponentials and so on. Okay? Now, by definition, you might remember, and it's actually going to be very useful for us in this, that ln x is just an abbreviation for log with what base? E, very good. So I'm going to pop that in. The reason why I'm doing that is because it helps me do the next step, which is to take this log equation and rewrite everything you see there but as an exponential equation. I'm going to do that because I know how to handle exponentials. We've said this before, I'll say it again. A lot of mathematics is devoted to taking problems that you don't know how to deal with and rephrase them or reframe them so they look like problems you do know how to deal with and then you deal with them. Okay. So help me remember, and I'll give you a quick example um, just, to, just to get there, right? If I said log base 2 of 32, if I asked you to evaluate th that with your calculator, it would tell you 5. That's a log equation. Can you help me rewrite, and the numbers hopefully are easy enough that you can even guess, can you help me rewrite this log equation as an exponential equation? I'll give you a clue. Start with the base. 2 to the power of two? 2 equals Yep, the base stays the base. 2 to the power of 5 gives you 32. OK, fantastic. So this is what we're going to do, but on this line. OK? So we started with the base here, which was 2. What's the base in this equation? It's e. So I'm going to write, uh, I'll write it over here, e. That's going to be my base. What's my power? f of x. f of x, this guy over here, becomes the power. f of x. And then what do I have left? There's only one thing. It's just the x. It's just the x. OK. So what I've done is I've rewritten this log equation as an exponential, and I'm really good at dealing with exponentials. So good that I'm going to take this line, left-hand side, right-hand side, and I'm going to differentiate both sides. Let me say that again. Here's an equation. You can do the same thing, the same operation to both sides, and everything is fine, right? You can multiply both sides by 2. You can add 1 to both sides. I'm going to differentiate both sides. Like so. Okay, is that all right? This just means differentiate whatever you can see there. Okay? Uh, we'll start on the right hand side for this, even though that's a bit backwards, but I'm just doing it because it's easy. The derivative of just x, what is that? It's just, it's just 1, right? In fact, you could write it as dx on dx, which is 1. So I've got 1 on the right hand side. On the left hand side, this is not as easy, but you can still do it. I need the chain rule on this. Okay? Can someone help me? How do I deal with this using the chain rule? We, we did a whole bunch of it over there. What are we going to do? Chain rule, right? It requires looking at the inside function and then the outside function. Here is the inside function. What's the derivative of the inside function? It's just f dash x. Like, I don't know what f of x is, so I'm just going to write its derivative is f dash. There's the inside derivative. What's the outside derivative? Yeah, it's just like it's e to the power of a thing. e to the power of a thing differentiates into the same thing. So I'm going to write the same thing. e different. This is the inside derivative. This is the outside derivative. OK? All right, now, I'm almost there. I'm very, very close. OK? Uh, what I'm really after is, is this guy. Do you see that? Like, this is the part I want, f dash because I want to differentiate this guy. Yeah? So I want to get that by itself. I'm going to change the subject so it's just this. So what should I do to both sides of this equation? Yeah, yeah, this thing here is like the thing in the way, right? So I'm going to just divide both sides by that, okay? which gives me f dash x on the left. What does it give me on the right? Just one over? Oh. One over this. Is that OK? Is that all right? Wait a second. Wait a second. Did you just take that over this? I divided both sides by this. Yeah? Look closely. This e to the power of f of x that I just divided by, look up a few lines. I can write that in a much simpler way, can't I? Have a look right here. There it is. e to the power of f of x. It's just x. Like, by definition, you help me write this equation, right? So therefore, f dash x, what's it equal to? It's 1 over x, which is what we sort of guessed at before when we looked at the picture. But just looking at a picture, like our eyes famously unreliable, this 
is watertight calculus, okay? We had to use our log laws, we had to use chain rule, stuff that we've looked at this year. But what I love about this is there's no arguing with this. There's no kind of like, uh, maybe. It's, it's clearly every single line flows onto the next one. You might not have guessed, oh, how did you know to do this and then this, right? Um, you know, I got taught that by someone else and now I'm passing on the lesson. But what's great about it is this, this is a proof. There's logic that goes all the way through this. Um, no guesswork, no estimation, no intuition. It's absolutely true, which is kind of the superpower of mathematics as a whole. So just to tie that in a neat bow, do you need this? No, but just as a whole, I, I think you should not have to accept things because someone tells you they are. Um, all of that is stuff which we've looked at within the scope of the course. So that's why I wanted to, to hand it to you.